Houston. This is Cattle Chris TV, and our special guest today is my good friend, John Arrigo. Um, John and I, over the years, have talked a lot about um, our mutual love for all things KISS, and we're going to continue that tradition today, um, talk about the 40th anniversary of this album, Creatures of the Night. Um, now, why don't we get right into it, John? What do you remember about, go back to 1982 or whenever you heard Creatures of the Night the, for the very first time, what are your memories of that album? Oh, yeah. I remember the day it came out like it was yesterday, man. It was like um, me and my best friend, uh, Ed Hillel, we were in college at the time. Uh, and uh, we had a, a local store that we went to for everything, basically, um, called Slip Disc Records in Valley Stream, New York, which is famous in the in Long Island scene. Uh, Mike Schutzman was the owner, great guy. We call him up, we're like, you know, did you get the album and did you get the album? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not like today where people buy stuff on their phone and sure, sure, whatever, sure, yeah. ship it at home. Sometimes they didn't get the albums on the day they were supposed to come out. But anyway, so we made sure he had it. You know, we drove over there like crazy from school. We drove back to his house because he had this killer stereo. And the first thing that we just like, when we first heard like the way the production was, we just kind of looked at each other like, what, what is that? this? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, and it was like the drums and the heaviness. So we're looking at the cover, and especially because, like, um, I have kind of comically dubbed the three albums before the trilogy of shit that came out before this album. Sure, sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's trademark John Arrigo. Not, not only kid. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. So it was like, it was like, what's going to happen? Are they going to put a fourth clunker out in a row and piss the old fans off forever? But no, they came back with like the ballsiest, heaviest album I think that they ever made. Uh, I mean, up until you know, that point, I mean, probably, I mean, you, you had a lot of heavy stuff going back to the debut album, like you know, Dude, yeah, and even Detroit Rock City and stuff like that. But but even that was more polished. I mean, this was the first time they really put out what right. they consider a heavy metal album. Right, exactly. The problem with the old albums was that they didn't have the money to make it sound like they did live. And then with something like like Destroyer, they went a little overboard and like overproduced it, you know. And this this reminded me more like rock and roll over, like that raw, yeah. you know, organic kind of sound. And I mean, like the drum sound, um, you know, it was. It, I mean, it just had everything. The way Paul the was monster like, drum sound. I mean, that's um, that's why this was Eric Carr's very yeah. favorite album he ever did with the band. And uh, I yeah, think, it's like the, it's like yeah. the most iconic heavy metal drum sound I, I can think of. You know, it's just like like cannons going off. And yeah. the strange and thing is, they're, record, they're recording. I mean, you compare the way they look on here compared to like the back right. of the elder, the, right? Like, yeah, Gene Harris short. You know, they look totally yep. different. Yeah, I remember I remember the quote from Gene when they asked him about the haircuts um, going into Creatures before it came out, and the quote was something like, "We're gonna have so much hair, we'll have hair on our teeth." Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is pretty funny. But yeah, man, I mean, like, you know, the funny thing is they recorded the drums in the bathroom of the church. Mm. You know, that's how they got that big, because the tiles made the, the acoustics incredible. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, just, I just, it was just, even though, even the execution of the songs, you know, yeah. like, the way Paul was, like, almost screaming, like, like you know, like, someone like, keep me coming. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. danger, you know, the way, just the way he sang was the whole attitude. It was like, this is the way they should have been if this would have been the album that came out, you know, instead of Unmasked, mm -hmm. where would they have gone? You know, what, sure. what kind of work, how much of the course of, you know, the band would have changed. Now, the funny thing, too, is, is that uh, when the album first came out, they went on the radio and did one of those like national uh, rock uh, line or something uh, like that. Yeah. FM, one of those FM shows yeah. to like yeah. separate the album coming out. And you were able to call in and ask questions. Me being the investigator I was, I yeah. noticed that on the album that the copyright date for the song I Still Love You, which was written by Paul and Vinny, was a year before any of the other songs. Which made me, me I started talking to my friends about it. I was like, well, how long did they know Ace wasn't going to be in the band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so I asked them about it and they just totally like deflected. They just totally, totally deflected the question and... See, people you know. forget, you know, they really kept that stuff under wraps. I mean, we now, all these years later, know, like, Bob Kulik played on all the studio tracks on Kiss Alive, too. But back then, they had everybody thinking it was Ace Fraley that played on everything. Um, and, I mean, and, and part of the reason for that, like I said, 
and they, they present the band as, as it was with all four guys. Um, so of course we're going to think Ace Braley's on the album. Um, do you remember what, what was the point when you learned, um, that, okay, no, that was Vinnie Vincent. Um, but I imagine like a lot of people probably wasn't until after look it up. Right. Most people. Yeah. I have a, one of my cats here is trying to invade my, my phone oh, space. Wow. <laughs> um we we kind of knew right away it was yeah, kind of yeah. like it was kind of like here in the end of rocket ride and knowing the, that wasn't peter chris yeah you know um you hear some of the 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 um the solo techniques that are on creatures you know it wasn't ace yeah they were trying to say well ace played on like this song and that song and we had somebody else no we we well, knew what, ace wasn't what's interesting that we know now is i because i found this stuff out like oh just going on to wikipedia for creatures of the night um um, while Vinny wrote and plays on a lot of his stuff, um, it was kind of like Kiss was auditioning guitar players at that time because they had everybody from Vinny Vincent um, to the, to Robin Ford to um, the guitar player from uh, Mr. Mr. Steve Foston or something like that. Yep. Um, and, well, it was one of those things. It was one of those things like 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 they used to do. They, I mean, they they did it on Destroyer too. Yeah. They did it on Love Gun. They just would. If, if they didn't feel that uh, somebody was available or somebody was uh, sober enough to play, they just brought in somebody else, you know, mm -hmm. and didn't tell us until, you know, 20 years later. <laughs> and that was not just Kiss, but that was a common practice back in the day, you know. I mean, um, mm -hmm. and I don't, like, even to go back to Destroyer, like you you heard the guys talk about, you know, Ace couldn't show up. Um, he was playing cards or something one night, so they got the – guitar player yeah. from Alice Cooper band, Dick Wagner come in and, and that had to do with Bob Ezra. Bob's like, well, if yeah. can't show up, we'll just get, you know, the guitar player from Alice Cooper's band to come in. Yeah, and like on Lick It Up with uh with um Exciter. Yeah. Yeah, they they were they were pissed off at Vinny and they wanted to show him that uh you know you're not the boss. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Vinny didn't find out until like the album came out when he heard the final mix yeah. and he was like, oh, that's not me. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I love I you know to this day creature stands up for, to me and I for oh, sure I, I I always loved it and I can't believe it's forty years like I said I remember that day like it was yeah. yesterday. Now, now let me ask you, John, um, have you invested in the big box set that just came out? No, no, unfortunately I don't have the bucks for something like I that. I was gonna but... say you know here's here's the thing with that I understand people can't afford that now. Um, fortunately, I was able to um, get myself a copy and at first I wasn't going to because I think you know. Three, it came. I, I got mine on Amazon. I came close to three hundred dollars once. You know, you add up all the tax and everything and the shipping. And I will say it was worth the investment. I felt only because they packed it up with a lot of little goodies. Now I also yeah. got this because I initially thought, okay, this is nineteen ninety nine. It's like a two disc set. You get like some live stuff from the Creatures of the Night tour. They, they, you get a couple of the bonus rarities and and you get the original album kind of remastered. The thing with this though. It's, it's kind of a limited a limited amount of what comes in the big box set. What I liked about the big box set is you get a lot of um, unreleased rarities and demos. And some of the stuff I've heard, but some of them I've never heard. For example, you get um, a, a version of uh, a song, Feel Like Heaven, with Gene Simmons on vocals now. You know anything about that song's history? Um, it appeared on the first, or, or on uh, Peter Chris's second solo album, Let Me Rock You. And mm -hmm. if you look at the credits, Gene wrote that song. Now, I've never heard the, vo the vocal version that Gene does, but that appears on um, on the big box set and, and stuff like that. And then they, they also have a new version of um, It's My Life. That's also been one of those songs that have been heavily covered by other people, Wendy mm -hmm. Williams, King Cobra. But I, 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 stuff like that, I never understood why that did not make it onto the album. And they also put on um, this song, Deadly Weapons. It's an early... Yep. It's an early demo of the song um, off of Asylum, Loves a Deadly Weapon. But mm -hmm. I kind of like this version of the song better. It's got different lyrics and it's just a different song, really. <laughs> yeah, I listen to I listen to most of the box on uh, Apple Music, so yeah. I kind of familiar with what's on it. Um, yeah, it, it's a sin that they couldn't find a better live recording from that tour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I thought the the what was it Nashville? I think they had. Yeah. Yeah, I think if Not I remember right, noise that, or something like that, yeah, that too. might have been like a radio broadcast or something. They said it's soundboard, but yeah. it, it might have been recorded for a radio show. I kind of remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I was I was kind of pissed that the tour got cut short for the yeah. album because uh, I really wanted to see them. And uh, 
I had a, a, another friend of mine, Tom Savino, uh, who was my kiss uh, c- comrade for probably about 75 of my 125 yeah. kiss shows. Yeah. And he was going, he was taking the trip up to um, from Long Island. And I, I'm probably not pronouncing it right. Worcester. Paul Stanley used to call it Worcester. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Massachusetts. Um, right. Yeah. And I gave him my, I, I used to, uh, don't tell anybody, but I used to, uh, I used to record shows on cassette, you know, back in the day. Yeah, back then. And so I gave him my, my my recorder i said you know if you if you can get it in you know try and record the show he did and i never circulated the tape i never traded it yeah and pretty good quality because that thing it was a good recorder for back then and there's not a lot of bootlegs from that era because the tour was so short um and most of them sound horrible so i I think part of the reason they released that stuff is because for some strange reason even though eric carr was in the band for like 11 or 12 years until now, there's never been any live recordings, you know, officially released by the band featuring him. Yeah. Um, and That's so I think sense. it's I think it's nice to finally have that out there because what's kind of sad. I remember when Eric Carr was still in the band around the time, um, you know, Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits came out. They were talking about putting out Kiss Alive Three. Of course, that never happened, yeah. and then they pushed it back, you know, a few years later. But um, so there was never until now a, a live um, any live recordings with Eric. So I think that's cool to have that out there, at least for that reason alone. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Eric, a great was... powerhouse drummer, you know. And um, and so again, I, I think um, if you can't afford if you can't afford the big box set, this this is a nice little sample of what of what you'll get. Yeah, um, you can get also, some extra stuff, you know. I forgot the guy's name. I was approached. Oh, what the heck is his name? Ken Sharp, maybe. Yeah, I was yeah, approached yeah. by. I was approached by somebody that works with Kiss or was working with Kiss for the box set because um, on the Creatures tour, when the album came out, Kick-Ass Monthly was uh, in its uh, second year of publication. Yeah, yeah. So we actually uh, uh, put out an issue, and it was still in black and white at this time, but the the printing was a little better than just Xerox. And we had a live... We had a right. We had a live picture on the cover, um, from kind of like far up, yeah. and you could see the flames shooting up around the tank. And they wanted to know where I got the picture from. Yeah. And I told them, I said, "Well, can't you just use the cover of my magazine? That would be freaking awesome." But yeah. they didn't want. They just wanted the picture. And I couldn't find the picture. And by wow. the time I found it, they had already, you know, announced that it was coming out. So I knew that the publishing and everything was uh, the printing was sent off, but I found out that the picture was actually taken by somebody who passed away. Oh, wow. uh, Al Munson, who used to um, uh, be like a, a, a Twisted Sisters unofficial official photographer in the club days. He used to be like every show up front taking oh, pictures wow. of Twisted yeah. from, you know, way before the first album came out. Yeah, yeah. And and he was a big Kiss fan too. And uh, yeah, we used his picture. And uh, I think it's when we reviewed... Uh, I don't know if it was for the review of the album or we just put out a an article on what was going on with Kiss yeah, yeah. at that time because it was intriguing for us because, you know, like when we first started the fanzine, the Elder came out. It was like, you know, we sure, you know, we sure. want to help we want to help Kiss, but we don't want to help him with this, and, you know. And and just to give people a time frame, you know, when Creatures came out, um, you know, here in twenty twenty three, Kiss is celebrating their fiftieth anniversary, you know, and the fortieth uh, anniversary of Creatures. Um, this is also a neat little thing they throw in the creatures box that you get like a creatures uh, a tour a tour um, tour book and of course as you see it says 10th anniversary tour so yep. at that time ten, they're only they were only together 10 years and they they gone through the you know two major lineup changes and you know we got the kiss army here which uh, uh, everybody loves. I have a story, I, I have a story about the tour book too okay, let's hear that I got stories about so much crap man it's yeah. funny um real quick again tom savino my buddy went to the show and not only did i get my tape recorder i gave him money i said give me a t-shirt give me the coolest t-shirt and give me a tour book so he comes back you know to me and i remember we were in college at the time and he was holding the tape recorder up to his ear he was listening to it i was just walking the hallway wow, wow. and he comes up to me gives me the tape recorder i'm like how to come out he's like oh it came out really good gives me the t-shirt and i'm like where's the tour book yeah and he's like they didn't have any I'm like, what do you mean they didn't have any? And they had back in those days, they printed the tour books like two weeks or whatever into the tour. They didn't have yeah. them in the very beginning. 
and then the tour got canceled and I never got to go see them. Wow. And the tour books were actually a real collector's item. Like if you used to go to those, like those, yeah, yeah. those fan held kiss conventions. Yeah. yeah, I, suppose, yeah. I mean, back then, back in the, in the eight, they were going for like a hundred bucks, which now is like 300 bucks, you know? Yeah. So because of, again, because of kick-ass monthly, we had a connection at the kiss office and I called up the girl and I'm like, I'm like, I want a tour book, yeah. but the tour's over. And she's like, oh, I think I have one laying around on my desk. If I find it, I'll send it to you. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Thanks. You know, yeah. sure enough, a couple of days later, came in the mail. Yeah, yeah. I got a free tour book and it's yeah. rare. It's super rare. So um, that was pretty cool. Yeah, see, this is another cool item we get in there. This is like the official press. I had kit. that too. Yeah. I had the I had the press kit. Yeah. I don't think I have it anymore, but I did have it. <laughs> you know, another interesting thing that should have been included to fans back then is, um, I don't know if you remember, um, there's an old um, live video footage of Kiss from 1982 when they played, like, did this little promo tour of Europe. And and it was only, um, like, Gene, Paul, and, and Eric. Ace wasn't present, and they didn't kind of, they didn't even really mention it. But um, that's kind of, a, I think, a, a, another kind of a clue that people missed back then. Yeah, there, there's a great, there's a great video. I'm trying I'm going to say it's from German TV. I think that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That, they were lip syncing uh, I, I Love It Loud. And yeah, Ace yeah. was at, and he was totally like, you could tell he was like not into it. But he was funny. He was yeah. goofing and making at the camera. And I remember Paul Stanley, like, because Paul plays the solo. There's not really a big solo on that yeah. song. But I remember Paul like tumbling down the ramp or something, holding his guitar up on his yeah, knees. Yeah, 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 yeah. Face is like going like this, like pointing yeah. at him. It was yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even if you look at the I Love It Loud video, I mean, um, that is Ace's supposedly last official thing he did with the band. Um, and, um, you know, didn't really pay attention at the time, but he 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 kind of looks like he didn't really want to be there. You know, yeah. kind of going through yeah. emotions. But it was a very powerful track. I mean, I equivalent it to when, you know, they put out Revenge. And I heard Unholy for the very first time. I thought, you know, Unholy, that reminds me. That could be like, I love it loud part two. And yeah. Then, same kind of vibe. Thing, I remember the thing about I love it loud that was really cool. The first time you hear it now, it's like, you know, whatever. Yeah. But like fading yeah. in and out at the end when yeah, it gets yeah. low and then it comes back up like even louder. And we I mean, he just, really <laughs> sounded like the demon. I mean, um, yeah, maybe for the first time since God of Thunder. I mean, um, I thought, okay, evil Gene is back. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, me and my friend Ed were looking at you like, wow, this is so cool, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then they had the, um, uh, they put out that awesome, um, I don't know much, many people know what this is, a double grooved A-side 12-inch. It oh, was wow. a vinyl single. And what it was is, I don't know if anybody realizes this, but a record is really only one groove that goes around the whole. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah, no. Vinyl. It's only one groove. It's one yeah. continuous groove. So what they did was, uh, when the album was, I think it was already out and they put out, I love it loud. And then they had a live version of rock and roll night. Yeah. And it was a double grooved a side single. So on the a side of the 12 inch vinyl, it depended on where your needle hit, which song would play. Oh, wow. Would I play, I love it loud or, or play rock and roll night. I think from a live, the flip side of, of the single, it's a 12 inch. Yeah. Was, so it wasn't an EP. It was only a single, but the flip side, the vinyl was, there was no groove in it and it was their autographs etched into the vinyl. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. It was the coolest thing. I mean, we were like freaking out. How'd they come up with this idea? Yeah. You yeah. know? And, and I, I still have it somewhere in my collection. I was really, really like mind blowing cool back oh, then. Wow. Yeah. And talk about mind blowing cool. This is another cool uh, photo we get in the photo fo- uh, and we get in the box set of Vinnie Vincent. Um, that, which brings me to my next question. What did you think of his makeup design when you seen it for the very first time? I, you know, I mean, I was like, well, what else are they going to make him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I was curious of what he was going to be. And then, like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's cool. Where do you yeah. stand with, like, you know, Tommy and Eric Singer doing, um, you know, Peter and um, Ace's uh, makeup? Me, personally, I, I think, you know, on one hand, at least they're being honest. They're telling people, okay, you know, obviously this isn't Peter Chris and Ace mm-hmm. Fraley. I, I'd have, I think, more of a problem with it if they were kind of, trying to deceive the fans into thinking it was really, you know, Ace and Peter, but they're not. It's business. You know, yeah, it, when yeah. it boils down to Ace and Peter both had the, oh, here's my cat again. <laughs> Hi, hey, Gypsy. Pete. Hey, Peter. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, Ace and Peter both sold the rights to the makeup yeah. back to the band um, yeah. because they needed the money or whatever sure, the reason sure. was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, it, 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 it boils down to money. It, people recognize those iconic figures. Yeah. Um, would it be cool if Tommy and Eric had their own personalities? Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be cool. But, you know, that's not going to sell on a mass scale like yeah. iconic. And I kind of agree with that because I never thought about this till I heard Gene and Paul talking about. Um, if you look at the four iconic, iconic characters, you know, the four original members, I think those designs are even more iconic than the guys in the band, if you know what I mean. Because um, unless you're a diehard Kiss fan, a lot of people might not know, okay, that's a Spaceman, that's a Dina, that's Gene Simmons. Um, it's just they, th they see those those iconic, you know, makeup designs and they think that's Kiss. Yeah, I think if I was a 12-year-old kid, it would bother me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, a, I'm not pretty far from that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, as an adult, for me, personally, yeah. right now, it, and always, it's been about the music. And, oh, sure. You know, if they weren't wearing makeup, if they're wearing, it doesn't matter to me. As long as the music is good and they sound good, I'm, yeah. I'm good, you know? If they oh, sure. if they would come out if they would come out and tell people hey this is Ace and Peter then obviously there's a big problem with that yeah of course you yeah. know it's all about the music man and and uh you know the band still sounds good so I mean I think I think Eric you know a, a drum wise is much better than Peter is now obviously oh, sure. because Peter's Peter's an old man and he can't play like that anymore I mean he couldn't and, play and like it, that he couldn't play like that on the reunion tour like he he was a savage back in the seventies yeah. I mean, was um, and, and here's, a, here's yeah. the thing with that. I mean, um, it has something to do with talent and luck, too. But, I mean, um, if Peter Chris was this hugely talented guy, I mean, why didn't his solo album sell more? Why did he only, you know, release a yeah. handful of albums, you know? And even, I, I think he, he tried to tour, like, in the 90s. I went and seen that tour they did, but, and, and it was fun if you're a Kiss fan. But, uh, I mean, he was never really, he was a one member of Kiss to never really get his solo career off the ground. Well, I think it's because I think it's because his music was so completely different yeah, than yeah. What he was doing. If he would have put out an album that was more like you know Hooligan and, and Baby Driver, maybe yeah. he would have did better. But you yeah. know he's doing fifties, you know, kind of doo wop songs. That's yeah, that's a whole different crowd, you know. And it's you know it's something I never wanted to hear. I mean, not that that stuff's not good. It's not something I want to listen to. Yeah, though. for a kid, if you're a Kiss fan, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at Ace. You know, Ace Ace put out stuff that was more. Along the lines of a hard hey, rock. Thing. At one point, he he hadn't put any new music out in twenty years, but then he comes back and he's able to do it. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah and, and and he stuck to the formula. You know, he stuck yeah. to the hard rock thing, and it was more successful uh, for that. You know, that's yeah. what I the way I believe it. You know, Ace is a rocker. You know, Peter maybe maybe Peter wasn't a rocker at heart. You know, yeah. I don't know, but I mean, like Ace is a you know, he's a rock and roll guitar player. So you know, yeah. that's the. And the songs reflect that. It was just cool. I mean, I, I do like on, on the 78 solo album, Peter Chris does a cool cover of that, you know, um, Austin and Turnin. I mean, that, that I think something like that Kiss fans can kind of get into, you know? Um, yeah, they, I mean, they played it live for a while on the on the Dynasty tour yeah. when they were trying to give all four guys a, a shot at playing a solo song. Yeah. That was the one that, that was probably the only one off that album that they really could have tried, to be honest yeah, yeah. with you. Yeah, you know, and, and Benny Vincent, I mean, as talented as the guy is, I mean, I think probably Creatures of a Night is, um, you know, obviously lick it up, but Creatures of a Night is probably, I think, um, Vinny at his pinnacle at his best because, I mean, um, like, I, I like the first Vinny Vincent album for what it was, you know, him and the singer Robert Fleischman, they seem to have a great, um, you know, uh, chemistry, but but even if you look at Vinny since he's tried to come back, he's another one, I mean, I, I do kind of have a problem with a guy charging fans $150 for a CD that were released 30 years ago just because it has his autograph on. I, I mean, at the very least, if you're not going to do live shows, you know, put out a yep. put out a new album, an EP or something, you know? Vinny's his own worst enemy, you yeah, know? Yeah, he's had now a chance. Good, yeah. Yeah. He, 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 and, and, and if there are any Vinny fans out there, sorry for saying this, but he treats the fans like crap, you know? He really yeah. does. He disappears. Yeah. Uh, he promises to put out stuff. He he pre makes you pre-order it, and then he doesn't put it out and doesn't give you a refund. There was a whole debacle with that cassette box that he wanted to put sure, out. Sure. Like a, in the and then I seen something on the internet recently where um, somebody was talking about 
he holds these fan events. And again, people are welcome to do whatever they want with their money, Where, but he's charging, you know, not just anybody can get in. I, I guess he, he announces these things to certain fans and, and he charges them $500 just to get in. And then if you want to have a autograph uh, photo, that's another $150 and just charging over like, like crazy amount for like an autograph guitar pick, like, you know, a thousand dollars and something. <laughs> I mean, Vinny was great live, you know, with yeah. Kiss. It, it was a totally different world than what Ace was doing. And let's not forget, too, that Vinny co-wrote a bunch of stuff on Revenge, which, yeah, again, yeah. was another album that's up there on the list, you know. Yeah, another yeah. Out heavy metal album uh, when they had kind of went away from that yeah. and then came back to it. Uh, again, they called on Vinny, and he he, he was great. He co-wrote oh, some sure. great songs on that album. I don't take that away. I mean... I, I put Revenge up there, like, right between Destroyer and um, and Creatures. I mean, um, I, I think those three albums, even though they're years apart, but um, especially, um, you know, Destroyer and um, Revenge, Bob Ezrin, you know, did his magic. Yeah. It's nice of the 40th anniversary, too, that me and my friend Ed that I was telling you about uh -huh. that I heard the album with the first time, you know, he was saying that... Uh, uh, that he that, that it's it's nice that the album is getting uh, some of the recognition. It, it I heard it originally... finally. I don't know what the number was, but it finally re-entered the chart after all these years with the box set coming out. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, you know, you know what the problem was, and this is what I try to explain to the fans: like, oh, I love Dynasty, oh, I love The Elder, I love Unmasked, and and like I said, if you like the music, that's one thing, that's fine. I mean, yeah. we've talked about this before, yeah. but the creatures not selling and the tour not selling is proof of what I've been saying all along is the damage that those three albums did to the fan base, sure, sure. And the band as a whole, because not only did it screw up the fan base, get Peter left and then Ace left. And why did, why, why did Ace leave? Because they did the elder when he thought they should have been doing a more album like creatures. Well, I mean, and, and if you realize too, okay. So the last time kiss had really toured the U S at that point was 1979 on the dynasty right. tour. And then unmasked, they 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 have a big show. show. We're in Australia, but they I think they did the one show in New York City when Eric Carr first joined the band. Lady and then the Elder Lord. comes out. They don't even tour behind that. So there's not really another U.S. Kiss tour until right. '82 when Creatures comes out. And and the and the thing was that it was almost too late because they had lost so many of the original fans. So many fans that made them the number one band in 1977 were gone. They were gone. Yeah. You can't put out. You can't put out three crappy albums in a row yeah it, it just killed them and creatures should have saved them even more than it did yeah. when it took them dropping the makeup on the next album to catapult them back oh, sure sure line hey, because you... it, caused, it caused such a stir oh my god kiss is gonna drop the makeup you know um and that saved them but creatures musically should have saved them if those original fans had been around i think they would have been happy with creatures like sure. i was I know, yeah, I, I never strayed, you know. You know, yeah. I, I was almost. It was almost embarrassing to be a Kiss fan when The Elder came out. It really oh, was. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I told people Iron Maiden was my favorite. You know, Killers is my favorite album. Yeah. You know, and, and, that, you know that's just, another interesting thing. Killers was released right before Creatures, and you know that's another cool thing to get the big box set. It, it includes those four uh, new studio tracks. No, I meant, I meant, I meant Iron Maiden Killers. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying. I, I was just bringing that up because, um, like, like those four tracks on Killers. I don't know why those did not end up like on Creatures of the Night. I think it would have been a very different, you know, album. I mean, ah, another point my friend Ed made. Ed's yeah. a smart guy. He really yeah. is. He said if you take those four songs from Side Four of Alive Two, yeah, and the four songs from Killers, Killers, and made an album out of it. That's yeah. a pretty good start, right? It's eight songs sure. right there. Yeah. Eight and nine songs are pretty yeah, solid. I think that's why they went in the heavier direction with um, with um, Creatures, because once they did those four uh, new tracks for Killers, um, which I think was more of a record company thing, they thought, okay, we uh, we need to do more stuff like that. And then yeah. um, and, and mm -hmm. if you look at everything on Creatures, it all kind of fits. I think the real the two tracks that really stand out, I, obviously I love it out. And, uh, I love it loud. And then I still love you. I still love you. Not quite a power ballad, but it, it's more of an epic track. Um, but for kiss at the time it was very different sounding. Not, not just that. I mean, that was, 
I mean, the vocals on I Still Love You. I mean, any guy that's tried to sing. Yeah, yeah. Me, me too. Yeah. If I could sing like that, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like the and like I remember when he did it on Unplugged, it was absolutely godlike. You know, I mean yeah, yeah. that that was to me that was a a big thing. Now I don't know how true this is, but supposedly Paul's experimenting with some stuff um, around uh -huh. that time that kind okay. of screwed his throat up a little bit live. Yeah, and I think and I think when he tried to do that song live in the beginning of the tour, he realized that he needed to stop doing what he was doing, and he did. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, like, it's a sin the way he sounds now. It's terrible, but you know. Yeah. Wait, wait, uh, another another thing that uh, before you wrap it up for tonight, John, that that we should probably mention is I I've heard this story before. Um, supposedly, um, the track Vinnie Vincent does on his uh, debut uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion album, um, Back on the Street, um, the version they do of that um, on the Invasion album, him and Robert Flashman are trading off on lead vocals, but apparently. Vinny originally brought that into the Creature Sessions and wanted to do it on Creatures of the Night, um, but Paul rejected, I guess, in favor of um, of I Still Love You. But um, supposedly um, Kiss has a demo somewhere, but they just haven't been able to um, find it um, with Paul doing Back on the Streets. Wasn't it originally still Boys Want to Rock or something? Or is that a different song? Well, that that's on the that's a single off the first uh, Invasion album, but um, I think they I think they cut that too, maybe, and it never made it onto the album. Yeah, I kind of remember that that was like, oh god, what the hell was the name of that band? Warrior that Vinny was in. Yeah, actually, if you go on Amazon, they got like a Warrior. I think Warrior One and Two. They got these. Yeah, I think demos. I I think I think around the time that Lick It Up came out, the Warrior demos had kind of like made it around to the Kiss fans, like the Trading Circle. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of remember hearing a song that sounded similar to that with a different title, but I can't. Yeah, totally remember it. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like you know, it's rock and well, roll, brother. Yeah. Well, John, it's been great talking. Like I said, um, you know, our time is kind of limited because we don't want to get cut off after like uh, thirty minutes. Yeah. So I'm gonna let you go, but um, I think it'd be fun to have you back once once a month and do something like this. We could talk about you know, kick ass forever or whatever else you want to talk about. So, um, so let's do it, okay? Yeah, man, there are so many bands out there right now and so many great, you know, yeah, press yeah. agencies, labels, the yeah. independent enemy stuff. It's awesome, man. Metal is so alive right now. It's great. Yeah, in fact, may maybe we'll call it like Kick Ass Monthly or something, or you know, you think you think about that and I'll talk to you. <laughs> Kick ass forever monthly. <laughs> okay. There you go, buddy. You take care. Have a nice <laughs> night. And, and this should be going up next week. I'll let you know, okay? Hey man, I totally appreciate uh once again calling on me for this. I am... Um, well, you know, we've been having fun doing this, and you're one of the first people I thought he'd be perfect for this. So, um, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it, man. It's always always a good time talking to you, brother. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be in touch probably about a month from now. We'll do it again. So, take care, John. Bye, bye. Very cool. All right, bye.